beginning about your friend Jonathan Kaner, who's just died, and you were telling me a little bit earlier about some of the escapades and things that you had with him. Would you share some of those with us? Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Kaner, there's, there's, there's only one, going to ever be one Jonathan Kaner. And um, he was just an extraordinary man. Um, and kind, generous. You know, how many like really rich people do you get who actually are generous? Not very many. He was totally generous. He was a proper philanthropist. He would see people struggling in a good cause and he'd sort it out for them. He'd see people with like heartfelt desire and he'd sort it out for them. Say somebody wanted to go and see their guru, but they just hadn't got it together or couldn't or wouldn't make money. But they still had a heartfelt desire to go and take some teachings. Jonathan Caney would make that possible. And there's many people who he made that kind of thing possible for. Say people had projects, you know, mad projects. There was one guy, I think he was like 93, <laughs> and he'd been developing um, nuclear fusion in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> and fate and fortune had put him together with Jonathan Kaner. And Jonathan Kaner was seriously, when I spoke to him about it, he was seriously considering raising millions of dollars to sort out this 93-year-old boffin in his garage he might have discovered nuclear fusion and solved the world's energy problems <laughs> I don't know if that panned out or not <laughs> a lot of things that Jonathan was generous with didn't pan out mm. but he didn't do it to get a result mm. if, if Jonathan gave you something his time because um, he was very very busy so his time was really precious Tell us how he used to do his readings. You were explaining about how he used to uh, do, yeah, the well, his, do the ring. Uh, when I was time. hanging out with him, um, you know, you'd think these readings are so well considered. They're, they're so well considered that they might, he must sit there in a silent room, you know, with like books and ephemerises of astrological data and work it all out and then write it. But actually, as I recall, he would get up in the morning, you'd come into, the, I remember coming into the kitchen. Uh, he'd got his iPhone, he's in his dressing gown, he's doing something in the fridge, and he's going, Virgo, um, <laughs> Count Basie always said, and he's putting things down, and the lyrics of the song, da 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 da, and then he's turning, going over, and he's chopping something up, and he's bunging it in the thing, and he's still dictating the thing, Scorpio, and this time, no, now he's walking, he's got a vacuum cleaner, and he's sort of doing it with the vacuum cleaner, and he's just channeling it through. I said, Jonathan, why don't you sit down and just give it some... He said, no, it just comes... If I've got my mind occupied, then I can just do it. And watching him do it, do his thing, create those beautiful, um, beautiful astrological reports every day. Unfailingly, you could be in Tibet, he'd be doing it. You could be in Himalayas, he'd be doing it. You could be on a... In a uh, festival he'd be doing it all the time whatever else is happening he always does that and just really amazing just really amazing and also the place that he comes from you know so much heart real wisdom real wisdom is very rare his own wisdom you know he as also he he would never set himself up as a master even though he had all the qualities of a master in my view in, he had the knowledge, the connection, he had the, the language, the ability to communicate it, he had the karma to draw people towards him, he had just pretty much everything you need to be a master, yet he wasn't, he was always a student, he always had a master who he visited and took instruction from and took teachings from, and that kept him perfectly positioned within himself, no arrogance, there was never any arrogance perceivable with Jonathan Kaner. There was humility and kindness and consideration and generosity, proper generosity. Not generosity that has a motive, that isn't generosity, but the movement from the heart, which is just giving, because it's fun, because it's to be done. And, uh, you know, he's just really funny, really, really funny as well. Very, very beautiful, um, I said to him, uh, he produced this picture the last time I think I communicated with the last time but one. 
new picture for his astrology website where he's all in white and you know new shaved head and uh, there's clouds and rays of light behind him like he's in heaven and I wrote a text and I said Jonathan are you God <laughs> <laughs> And he said, no, I'll leave all, I'll leave all that up to you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but just a beautiful man and a really good friend, you know, and it, he gave a lot. It was quite hard to give back to him, but he gave a lot to me and to many people I know. And, you know, like f at the festival, Sunrise Festival, that he supported massively. Um, and then, of course, there was the Rainbow Circle, which he supported massively, and you know other great missions on the planet um, that very quietly uh, he supported with a lot, with a lot, a lot of a large portion of what he earned. He gave. He would have had to have done because even what I know he gave was, was colossal, colossal amount. And so, very, very beautiful, shining being, you know, like. You know, in the modern era, you could almost kind of say, I don't know what to overdo it, but I mean, he shined. He shined. He had wisdom. He was at peace. He was kind. What do you call a person like that? And loved pretty much by everybody. Realized. Realized, saintly. Beautiful being. Beautiful, beautiful. Successful life. Successful life. You know, how do you measure a successful life? You know, what actually is it that determines success? I think for me it's like, did you find the love? Did you share the love? Did you get loved? And did you realize yourself as love? Prem, Premi. He was a Premi. He, he ticked all the boxes in that regard. Beautiful. But really humble. Confrontingly humble, because he had a lot. You know, really, and he worked at it and kept it shining. Beautiful family as well. He knew tragedy in his life, lost his wife, first wife, and he didn't have a lot when he lost his first wife, but he accelerated through that and got totally into it, sorted it out, and looked after them all and looked after them really, really well. Great man.